this is broom boom number two. Now, I don't know, can you see the roots that are coming out of the bottom of this broom boom? That is from the little hardack, which is that little green leafy plant there, and this big one here. That's hardack, it grows along our shoreline naturally. It holds our shoreline together, basically. So um, what happened when the level of the lake changed is a lot of our hardack had to try and move back farther because it, um, it uh, wasn't getting out of the water like it used to. So it's had to readjust itself. And it's done all right holding in the shoreline so far, but we lost all of our reeds and all of our cattails because they got drowned. So what I've done here is I've planted reeds that I just pulled out of the shoreline from beside my wharf. And I planted them. So look at that. Isn't that amazing? Look at how the, they've just rooted themselves in together. So this is going to hold the, the mat together. So this is made of scotch broom. So there's the hard act. And look at how happy it is. I put that one in at the very beginning. And it's very, very happy. Um, I've got grasses in here. I've got comfrey. Um, and I've got the cattails. And if I turn it around here, I can show you. I'm just spinning it around in the sunlight. Over this way, you can see the comfrey in here. And then there's um, ferns and more comfrey. And then more reeds and, and cattails again. So this is a fully functional little wetland that we have here. And um, it is cleaning our water with all those roots that are underneath it right there. You can see them. Those are, those are roots. So this is all cleaning the shoreline. Isn't that the neatest little thing? Um, it's about, I don't know, four and a half feet long, three feet wide. Uh, it's made from scotch broom that's bundled with twine and I have some pieces of wood in it for some stabilizing to hold the pieces together. And then all I did was just pull apart the broom and shove in plants and this is what I got. So this, if I was able to get a camera and go underneath it, especially right now because the sun is just at the right angle to catch all of the um, roots, I could probably show that there's fish underneath this garden too. Because as this garden blows around in the wind and either blows south or blows north, the kingfisher will sit on my pole and watch it because the kingfisher will catch the fish that are living underneath the garden as they are swimming underneath in the garden all of a sudden blows away on them. They are exposed and in flies the kingfisher. And they also fly in between this garden and the big garden here because um, they're all hiding underneath all of my gardens because it's safe. But every now and then they like to fly out, come out, swim out, and uh, travel around to different gardens. So this is one of the ones they travel to. So that's, that's broom boom. Um, number two. So this over here, got to walk carefully, it's getting slippery and I have a hole in my wharf. There we go. Um, this is uh, another broom boom that I built. Uh, this isn't actually a boom, this is just an old container garden or it was uh, an old flotation container that held um, styrofoam. So we flipped it over, took the styrofoam out and I put broom in it and then I planted a bunch of other things. So look how happy the cattails are in this. This is really, really happy cattails. Over there, once again, we've got really, really happy reeds. So I know that these rooting um, cormer uh, uh, type plants really like it. Um, the comfrey that I just put in uh, last Saturday, or a week ago this Saturday, I should say, um, is doing great. It's perked right up, um, never, never really unperked. Um, I put a lavender in there because I don't know if it's gonna live or not, but I got given a free lavender. And lavender apparently is a really good bioremediator of toxic waste and contaminants. So we have my cattail here, which is fluffing, so it's spreading its seeds everywhere as the wind blows. Um, the ferns, mm, I don't think they did really well, but they do take a while to establish. I found any ferns I transplanted usually didn't do well the first year and then bounced back on the second. So we've got uh, more comfrey here and more ferns. And let me just walk around my garden of cherry tomatoes, which I have to harvest, by the way, because there's a lot of tomatoes on there. See? Yeah. More comfrey here, and this is uh, grasses, and I've got some uh, just grasses that I pulled out from the shoreline in, well, my shoreline, and then a more hardack. The hardack is a really, really good water cleaner once again, which is why it grows on the lake. Okay, and over onto this one. So this is my first broom boom that I built, and this one, let me bring it in, um, was built... Uh, 
with absolutely no idea what I was doing. So <laughs> this is definitely not um, the best example, but it is my first. So I put comfrey in there about, hmm, I think about three weeks ago was my first attempt with comfrey. And look at how happy that is. So that is a happy little comfrey garden. Comfrey absorbs um, heavy metals and toxins again. The grasses have done really well. Um, the hardack has now established itself. I just didn't get as much planted into this one as I did the other one. Um, not quite sure why. I just, this one wasn't as held together as well as the second one was because I learned on this one that, you know, <laughs> it had to be really well secured. But this one, once again, has incredible root systems underneath it. So it's, it's not about the, well, it's about uh, holding everything together with the broom and then making these. So if we moor these in the shoreline, I don't know if you can see, but down here I have a milfoil problem because the milfoil showed up and it's just taking over. Between here and my sister's wharf, it's just, you can't even swim in it. So milfoil can't grow in the shade. So if we can create gardens that create shade on the 20, about um, on the shoreline there, about 12 to 20 feet deep, um, the milfoil won't be able to grow because it'll be in the shade. So it'll choke it out. So we could build floating vegetable gardens. We could blow, build floating wetlands um, en masse and, and, sh and just put them in the shoreline over here. And then we won't have any milfoil problem because the milfoil can't grow in the shade. So I'm pretty sure that if I were to go out to that dock out there, which I want to turn into a floating greenhouse, um, I'm pretty sure if I go underneath that dock, there will be no milfoil because it can't grow in the shade. I know there's no milfoil under these docks here. I know that. I was out pulling it out over there where it gets sunlight. So there's a solution right there. We take two inva uh, take an invasive species like Scotch broom, turn it into a floating wetland like this, and then moor them in the shoreline with water bushes that clean and absorb all the toxins that are coming into our lake and will be coming into our lake this winter thanks to the toxic pit government approved. So here's a solution. This is what I'm working on. And um, things are starting to go to sleep. I got a squash. I've got a couple of cucumbers that I'm still letting uh, sit there for a while. My lettuce has gone to flower, which is great because the last of the bees are sucking up on it. Um, I have, uh, my corn has sprouted now. It's not gonna grow anything, but it's growing really tall. <laughs> so, um, but corn, once again, is a really good bioremediator of toxins. So another good thing to have on the wharf. And this one is just, gar just grasses and chop and drop. So I think I'm gonna clear a couple of the containers in there and um, put in some winter, um, some winter plants, some kales, and I got given some other winter plants, turnips and things like that that I can plant. Not sure about rooting vegetables, but we'll see what happens. It's all an experiment, all an experiment. Thanks, have a good night.